Hi folks, how you doing? Um, today we're going to tie an easy, easy fly. Really easy. Um, when I first started fly fishing, um, I tied quite a few of these. And then bucktail came along. So um, yeah, and you, know I like, you know I like my bucktail. But anyway, uh, uh, recently I've been tying a lot more synthetics again and figured that I'll do a tutorial on a basic synthetic fly uh, that you know beginner fly tires could try tying up because it's very very simple uh, but also very effective so without further ado let's start tying in the vise we've got an Arex Trout Predator 610 um, quite a heavy wired hook but very strong um, if you want a lighter wired hook I suggest you try the Trap Predator 605, which is new. So the first thing we need to do, uh, we need to put some um, weight on here. You don't have to add weight. Uh, I like to, just to get the fly to sink a bit quicker. Um, these are quite heavy wired hooks anyway, so they do sink quite well, but just a little bit of weight to, uh, to the head, <clears throat> just to give it a bit more of that jiggy action in the water. That's enough. The wire is a uh, lead wire, I think it's a medium, uh, but use whatever you have. So the thread is uh, GSP 100. You don't have to use GSP. Uh, Viva's Power Thread 140 is probably strong enough. And make sure you tie that, that weight in pretty well. Just build a little dam in front of it so it doesn't move. And come over the top. And then around the back to tie it in properly. Then come over again. And then backwards. So that's not going to go anywhere now. Now come down the shank. Now we don't want to go all the way to the bend. Let's come to around about there and start building a little bump. Because that's going to be our first tying point. that and then come in front of the bump add a little bit of glue super glue or whatever you want to use this is liquid fusion so it doesn't dry straight away that's fine it soaks into the material well <clears throat> now for the tail we're using Kanakalong now you can use whatever synthetic you like uh, there's lots out there there's uh, chirpbait mania pipe skins deer creek glisten gl uh, glint uh, Steve Farrow blend. Um, they're very, very, all very, very similar. Um, I've got a load of this stuff, so I'm going to use it. Uh, it's quite a long, long material, as you can see, but we don't need that length. So what I'm going to do is take it, take some off for the tail. Now it's going to be quite a sparse fly, so probably around about that much, which isn't a great deal. And we're going to cut, I would say, probably about eight inches. So I'm just going to cut this down on my vise. Now we want to blend this with some flash. Now we could tie flash over the top, but it's nicer if you blend it in. So for this, I'm going to be using Flashaboo Polar Flash in gold and silver. So I'm going to take Take a few strands of gold, not many, probably about 10. It's up to you. If you want to add more, you can add more. Now I cut that slightly longer than the, the synthetic because we've got to taper that synthetic. So it's going to be longer than what we cut. And I'll do the same for the silver. And then I'll lay that on top. So you can't see this, but I'm literally just laying them on top of the synthetic and I'm just going to pull that flash through the synthetic a few times to blend the gold and the silver. Don't need to do it very much. I just want to taper those ends. Just make sure that flash is tapered and that synthetic is tapered to around about the same length. And to do it until you're happy with it. No point rushing. So we're looking for something a little bit like that. 
okay maybe a bit more a bit more synthetic at the end there so what I'm going to do I mean you can tie this however you want I like to tie my tail on the top so just away from the hook a little bit more prevents less snagging I mean if you want to put some bucktail in here as well you're welcome to do that um, but I'm going to tie this probably about that distance so 35, um, 65, 60, 40, whatever. This is quite a small fly. I'm going to tie that down. And then we're going to bring the longer piece over the top. Like that. And tie that down. And then roll it. That's all we need to do. Then come forward. Right, a dubbing loop. And bring your thread down to the dubbing loop will probably end about five mil from the hook eye. And grab your tool. Mine's all tangled in my synthetic. So I've got one of these spinny ones spin really well and um, they're not they're not expensive probably about 10 to 12 pounds grab some wax or something sticky you want something sticky in here that sticks to the thread you can use anything give it a good wax now what we're doing now we're creating a dubbing loop of short short synthetic material now you can use whatever but um, I really like the Hedron Strong Fuzzy Fibre. Um, I find it, it's got enough crinkle in it and enough stiffness to create some bulk in the mid of the fly. So I'm going to use that material, but there's lots of other materials out there you could probably try and probably do the same thing. So what I like to do with this, I like to mix my yellows and oranges, especially in this color fly. So we don't need much probably about that much and what I'm going to do with that I'm going to cut it into various sizes okay so I'm going to probably cut it into about three quarters of an inch and inch sizes on my pedestal so I'll show you what that looks like in a second and I'm going to mix them together so you've got like an inner inner an inner core so to speak with various sizes and it creates creates the volume then that you need. I'm going to do the same for the orange. So you don't need much of this. I so say it's quite a stiff material which is, so it works well for dubbing loops. I mean you could create, create a brush if you really wanted to but to be honest the time you've made the brush you could have quite easily made a dubbing loop as in when you need it. But that's up to you. I'm creating the core of the fly now. So this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to feed this in. So it's various lengths. I want to spread this all the way along the dubbing loop. Now, if you're not if you're not practiced making dubbing loops, don't worry because you can correct it during the uh, the the spinning. Because you do find that this stuff does tangle within the, the loop, but you can pick out what you need. So what, this is what it's going to look like. I don't know well you can see that. So I'm just going to spin that up. Oh, I've lost, I've lost one of my, there we go. I'll spin that up, give it a good spin catches on the hook just tease it back there we go somewhere is my my needle so what I like to do is just just go through it pick out any tangled bits pull them out because you do get a few in there depends how much you use and if you use a bit more than this it doesn't tend to tangle so much but if you use quite sparse amounts like I am it will tangle a little bit. That's fine. It's going to be pretty much covered anyway by other materials. 
just pull that out. There we go. So it looks a little bit like that. There's a few gaps in there, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. So before we spin that on, we're going to just put some glue down. I'm nearly out of glue, so bear with me a second. There we go. Put some glue down on top. Now wrap that round. Keep wrapping. Tie that off. Come over the top and come forward. Give it a snip and get your needle. And just pick out any trapped fibers. Use your rotary. There we go. So it looks a bit odd at the moment. You could probably fish it like that and it would catch fish, but we're not, we're gonna finish this fly properly. So what we need again, we need the synthetic, the Kanakalong. And we probably need maybe a little bit thicker than the last lot that we took. So we're taking a length about this size and we're gonna cut that. So I'm just gonna cut that. Now, we, for the bottom part of the fly, we want it to be slightly shorter. So we're looking, we're looking for about five inches, four or five inches. And then for the top part, we're looking for about five or six. We're going to fold that over. A little bit of waste. And again, we're going to mix, we're going to mix the gold. Gold and the silver together. And we're gonna use all that lot, but we're gonna cut it into the sizes that we need. So about five inches and about four inches. And we'll do the same with the silver. do the bottom half first this is what it looks like we're just going to give it a quick blend doesn't take long just blend together get rid of those straight edges you'll lose a few bits of flash make sure that gold and silver is mixed together properly give it a roll and we're going to tie this on probably about 60 40 again so 60 this way so turn your vice upside down and tie that down i'm going to take the long the, the, the back part we're going to do the same we're just going to blend it up quick doesn't take a lot of blending through this synthetic the blending is really the blending of the flash i'm going to take our synthetic and flash and just Make sure it's tapered, like so. And again, we're gonna come 60-40 over the top, like so. Give it a quick whip finish to keep that thread locked. What I like to do is add a bit of glue Take your pusher back tool and spread those, make sure those fibers spread all the way around. It's like a, it's like a reverse tie really with synthetics. Spread them all the way around. Tie that back, hold, go to the top. Now the, 
the core of the flow will push that synthetic up and that's the whole point of it is to create the create the shape and you can see if I turn that that way it's got that nice bait fish shape to it tie that down come forward now for the last part we're going to you can use whatever head material you like uh, wool roving predator dubbing there's lots out there um, but if you want the fly to last and be durable um, those materials are great but they don't particularly last very well so a big fan of night and night does last really well so what we need for this is some gray I've got some I think it's gunmetal gray or similar but we can we can play with the color shades so we don't need a great deal of this so just a little bit of night probably about four inches long I'm going to take some black night Probably slightly less amount. Depends how dark you want the, the back of the fly. And then we're going to take some Angelina fiber. This is dirt cheap stuff you can get from anywhere. Just search Angelina. And we're going to lay that on top and we're going to blend those two together. It makes a bit of a mess and I get flash everywhere. So make sure you hoover up after you've finished, <laughs> otherwise you'll be in trouble. Make sure that's well blended. Now what I tend to do, so that's quite, quite a darkish grey, gives it a nice contrast. So I take those long fibres and I lay them on top, like that. And I turn it around, I just check I've got the right coverage. I'm going to lay that down probably around 65, 35. So that's the top of the fly. Now we'll take some white. Now this white is quite a long one. So I'm going to take about the same amount as what we took for the black and the grey. So don't, don't, we want to use the under fibres. Maybe not the shortest ones there, just take those out. But the longer ones within the bulk of the night we want to use. So what I like to do this one is mix some gold Angelina. And I, again, what I do, I just pull it all through. And I tend to break some of these white ones because they're quite long, but that's fine. Night will break under pressure. I don't want it that long, so I'm just I'm just breaking them as I'm pulling them through. I'm taking those super long ones again, pulling them to the front. I'm going to spin that over, tie that down. Same distance. Let's pull that back. Wet finish. Add some glue, and before we do that, we're just going to give the. We'll just hold these because they'll come out if you pull if you comb it through. Just give it a quick comb through. Trying to catch yourself on the hook. Take some glue. Add some glue all the way around. So you want those fibers to stay in place. Just separate the, the gray ones, push them back with your thumb, grab your comb, just cut them through. Do the same for the bottom fibers, spread them either side. Probably don't need to comb those. Grab your clip. Just make sure that those fibers are equal on either side, which they are. 
And next we need to use, we need to put the eyes on. So I, I like the uh, 10 mil volcano, vol, volcano eyes on these. So for this, we're using tear mender and we're just dabbing the head. What that does, it creates a nice solid, but flexible head. So those eyes are less likely to come off. So we want the tear mender to go all the way through. Don't need loads, just enough. And what that tear mender does as well, it helps you shape the head to the desired angle that you're after. I'm looking for about 45 degrees. Now what I like to do, not everybody likes to do this, but I do because I want my eyes to stay on, is I put some, um, I can unblock it, uh, Evo Stick Serious Glue. So a couple of dabs of that, where I want the eyes. <clears throat> and I place the eyes on top. So give yourself a couple of mil away from the hook eye, because we need to finish this with some UV resin afterwards, once it's dried. Sure those eyes are straight which they are so you can see the shape straight away so what i tend to do is pull those fibers up and just rub your finger underneath the bottom just to it will bobble up a bit but that's fine because once it dries it goes see through and you can always get a marker pen and just go over the top of the, the glue to darken it up and that is pretty much it. So the only thing to do now is once those eyes have dried, just straighten them up first. So you've got time to play with this glue while it's set. So what I suggest you do is just check it five or 10 minutes, come back to the eyes and just, just realign them, make sure that they're set. So what I tend to do I won't show you this process because it's pretty straightforward, but I use Deer Creek Fine Flex. Um, you could use five minute epoxy if you wanted to, um, or even liquid fusion. Um, if you've got one of those spinners, because um, you, you need to spin it with both epoxy and liquid fusion because they don't set straight away. Um, but the quickest way of doing it is uh, UV, uh, Deer Creek uh, Fine Flex UV. And what I tend to do, I won't show this, I tend to do the eyes first, but go over the eyes around the hook eye. Just with a glue, just where we've put the glue. And I do the same on the other side. And once that's set, I do the top and I do the bottom. And there we go, the fly is finished. So there we have it. So a very simple fly, um, very sparse, fish as well. It's a jiggy, jiggy fly. Um, I'm sure it would jerk a little bit because those eyes are quite narrow, but it's not really designed for that. Um, real quick, real easy, you know, good a good starter fly if you're just started to fly, started fly tying. Um, you can tie this in bigger, seven inch, eight inch. Uh, this is a five inch fly. I've tied them three and a half, four inches on smaller hooks. So yeah, it's up to you, but it's dead easy. Materials are fairly cheap. Um, worth investing in NIAT, uh, places you can get them from. I mean, I get mine from uh, Foxy Tails or BigStreamers.com. Uh, you know, quality does vary a little bit. Uh, big Streamers tends to do big, longer NIAT and maybe a bit more generous in the packaging. Um, Foxy Tails do, you know, uh, I've used them for years, so they do good quality NIAT as well. Other places, if you, I don't think they sell it in the States, but I mean, Canada, uh, Skeena River Fly Supply sell NIAP, they call it Snow Runner. Um, but yeah, so wherever you, I'm sure you can get it if you look around, um, but it's a very robust material, um, better than the wool heads, because they last a lot longer. Um, it doesn't soak so much water as well. 
So yeah, give it a go. Let me know how you get on. And um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see more videos, let me know. Cheerio. Bye.